I think would have had great difficulty in saying that there wasn't some conspiracy or someone hadn't tampered with a car before it actually was involved in going over the um, down into the tunnel at 75 miles an hour being chased by the paparazzi. Well, Lord John Stevens, thank you so much for joining us. We watched the uh, documentary, docu-series on Discovery Plus, um, the Diana Investigations, and it is eye-opening and it is um, fascinating. So was it ever difficult for you to relive? Is it ever di difficult for you to relive this investigation? Well, not to relive the investigation. I think it, to relive the, the fact that I took it on in the first place sometimes is quite quite <laughs> difficult. But no, um, it isn't. But I mean, it, it was a very, very hard period of time over three, three years. And then the real issue, which caused probably more stress to me and my team, was the coroner's inquest, which was in front of uh, 11 members of the jury. Uh, over six months, where everything we did was cross-examined by you know, Mr. Al Fayed's legal team and Michael Mansfield, probably one of the best people at doing this, this type of cross-examination in the country, in this country anyway. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, they, they were difficult times, but at the end of the day, we knew we did, we did a good job. We, we, we looked at 104 allegations and mm -hmm. bottomed out all of them uh, and had the cooperation, fortunately, of the brigade criminal at the beginning. So. No, I don't regret doing it, and I I, I, I would really, really be wrong to say that because I, I enjoyed working the team with the team I had. There was not one leak over that period of time from my leak from my team to anybody else. That's incredible. You all you've all worked so hard on this. Um, I love how you speak of the team that you worked for, but it's been eighty five years, and these conspiracy theories still persist. How, I mean, how do you feel about those and sort of what's your reaction to the theories and will they ever go away? Well, um, the bottom line is, you know, we worked on this for three years and then every single aspect of what we did, or every single allegation, I, we brought it down to 104 allegations and each and every one was investigated. This was tested in a way, 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 way beyond the Warren Commission. This is one of the reasons for doing the program. We're doing a program with people who we can trust, who will put it forward and not spin it in any way, one way or the other. Um, you can't do any more than what we've done. Um, and, you know, I was, des Mr. Alpha, I was desperate that I would do the inquiry, bearing in mind the three inquiries I'd done, did in Northern Ireland with the collusion of the uh, paramilitaries and the security services. So we did everything we could do. And what was really the issue was that the fact that every single aspect of what we did went in front of the courts. We were cross-examined by some of the best lawyers in the, in the country over six months in front of 11 people who are members of the public. And those people after six months said, we came to the right conclusions. Now, I don't think at the beginning of all of this, 85% of the British public thought there would be a conspiracy, which is very serious because the allegations were that the Queen's husband, together with, with, with the security forces, had murdered the most popular woman in the world, which he was at that time. Maybe still is, I don't know. Uh, so the bottom line of it all is, is that everything we did was justified and verified by members of the public. And we've been as open as we possibly can about what we've done. And uh, I just hope, all I'd ask are those people who are cynical about it, Will they just look at the programs, mm -hmm. keep an open mind, and then come to a conclusion at the end of it? There will always be people who still think there's a conspiracy involved. But that's the nature of these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, why do you think people are still so obsessed with these conspiracy theories after all these years? And even, you know, after watching this, it, it clearly seems like this was just a tragic accident. Yeah, well, it definitely was a tragic accident. Everyone says that from, from who, who, who knows about it. I, I think that's a really good question. I think because she was a very gra glamorous lady, she had very good causes, mm -hmm. she was adored by people, make no mistake about that. The thought that she had just actually died in a, in a car accident, I think it's difficult for people to understand. And let's be clear about it. When we took on the inquiry, and I'll give, just give you one example of why Mr. Al Fayed was right to ask for an investigation, which we did. And this is just one example. You know, we don't have time to talk about all the others. Um, when the blood of Henri Paul was taken, uh, he was found to have very, very high carbon monoxide in his blood. And that would have indicated that someone put a pipe or done something to the car, which would have disabled him and also the three people, sorry, the four people in the car, or three people other than him in the car. 
Now, the French didn't have an answer for that. So what we then did was we then got the blood samples from Diana, which was still in existence, thank the Lord, and found that the French pathologist had taken the blood from the cavity in the chest of Diana rather than the heart. And when that was done and re-examined, then the carbon monoxide levels came down to an understandable level. Now, that's just one example of what we did. Now, Mr. Fayed was absolutely right to cause that into, uh, as a concern. And there were one or two other things we did and we had to bottom out. And he was right to bring that. And it took a fair, that was one of the issues. I think if we hadn't have bottomed out, I think we'd have had great difficulty in saying that there wasn't some conspiracy or someone that hadn't tampered with a car before it actually was involved in going over the, uh, down into the tunnel at 75 miles an hour, being chased by the paparazzi. You know, before you um, did these tests and these investigations and really looked into these, you know, physical samples, um, what did you think about this tragic accident? Did you think that there could have been something amiss or did your experience, you know, sort of tell you otherwise? Well, the, the thing to do, and that's one, one of the things I've always said, and I said it outside the IUC headquarters before I started this long business of collusion inquiries, which was very difficult and very dangerous thing for us to be doing. Um, but we were going to go where the evidence took us. That means to say you do not make assumptions unless the evidence is there to assist you to do it, and that evidence can be proved. So for all of this, I kept we all of us, all 12, and on occasion we had 16 working with us, all of us kept an open mind. And the evidence was the thing that we held to. The other thing we held to, uh, if there was any pressure coming from anybody, and remember this was a beginning of the social media, it, it was just massive the pressure that was around. We kept to ourselves, we got on with our job, and we got ready to go to the coroner's inquest, which was going to be at the Royal Courts of Justice, which is one of the highest courts in the country. Um, and that's the only way to do it. Do not go one way or the other or be influenced by people. Only be influenced by where the evidence takes you. What was it like going? Because obviously you had to go back to the scene of the accident. What was it like going there for the first time? And you know... oh yeah, that was really interesting because we were in a police car, and the press had got uh, an indication because they they closed off the armor tunnel for two days for us to have a look at it, or for one day when we went there. And I was with the head of the uh, the brigade criminal. And she and I were in a car and we had one or two people and there were police uh, and the paparazzi were chasing us. I mean, it was nothing compared to what Diana had to put up with and Henri Paul and Dodi and Trevor Weiss Jones, who was the bodyguard who survived it, but very badly injured. It was extraordinary running around here, trying to take photographs, getting in front of the police car. You know, the mo police motorcyclists had difficulty controlling them. And that evening, I really had an idea of what they must have gone through and why Henri Paul, who'd had a few drinks, but he wasn't drunk, had actually driven that car so fast. The speed limit was 40 miles an hour going down to that tunnel. He went into that tunnel at 75 miles an hour. So do you think that there is more blame to be placed on the paparazzi or do you think it was the driver's um, choice of drink that evening? Well, I think it's an amalgam of things. And, you know, it's, you know, I do a lot of flying of aircraft and Aircraft accidents are caused. If you bring out one link in the chain, that accident did not happen. There are a lot of things that if they had happened that night, if Henri Paul, he had to come back because he's more or less ordered to, to do so by Dodie. He'd left the hotel. We've got uh, television things of him having a couple of records, two or three, and then he went home. Uh, he probably had more drink there, I suspect, but he wasn't drunk. We know that from the way he handled himself on the CCTV. He had to come back because he called back by his boss. Now, if he hadn't have been there and they had taken the car at the front of the Ritz, it's all sorts of things if they hadn't have happened, there would not have been this horrendous accident. For more news content and exclusive interviews, make sure to hit the sub, like, and bell button down below and visit usmagazine.com.